Welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, March 21st, Sunday, I'm sorry, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or a doubter five, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Winter isn't coming anymore because it's been here, and now we can finally enjoy some spring. Let's go. Spring is coming. Summer is coming. Spring is here. That's right. Today, 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 first today day of spring. Today is the, the, what, equinox? Yeah. Nice. And our guests today are George Buffalo and George Brooklyn and Boudreaux. Hello, all. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville or East Tennessee, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you more about how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video show slash TV show broadcasting here in Knoxville? It has been for over 10 years. Did you know that, Wombat? You're always bragging about it, but I've never seen WandaVision, and I don't want to start now. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, watch it and also watch our, our atheist TV show. <laughs> One division's pretty good. If, if, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page and use the messaging function to send us any questions or comments. Uh, what's our topic today there, Wombat? So apparently we have a lot of titles for today's topic this week. Uh, I want to go through some of the great ones that we came up. It's all the same. To- it's all the same thing we're going to talk about mm-hmm. but we have different titles for it is what i meant and so uh the idea is when can we speak up as atheists with regard to letting religious people know hey we don't have to do this religious ceremony you're on my territory you're in my home or this is a public event let's show some respect and right. so i like uh the eric said can atheists get a little grace or uh now bow your heads and pray or else I <laughs> There's a lot of catchy titles here. We'll go over them as we go through the show. But that's it. Uh, I'd like to lead it with Eric. Eric, would you mind talking? Or Boudreaux, would you mind uh, discussing this? And also, are you six feet apart from Buffalo? What's going on here? Because <laughs> we're vaccinated. So. Okay, they said they've been vaccinated. That's good. That's good. All right, Boudreaux, why do you mind introducing the topic? Yeah, so this, uh, this one's just kind of interesting uh, to me. And, and I think it's going to be interesting to hear what, what everyone else thinks because I think it's a it's a nuanced thing where it comes down to if you if you ask them hey hey you know let's not say grace um in, in this house because you know we we're, we're not religious but the other people eating the food are religious and saying grace doesn't hurt an atheist so you know part of me is like you know what's the harm let's be respectful let's let do them do their thing it's not gonna it's not gonna change the food in my mind yeah and again, there's also love to see respect from the other side. Like, couldn't you say grace, like, in the car ride over, you know, to the, the food that's in your lap, if you're carrying a casserole dish? I, you know what I mean? I'm maybe, maybe a little facetious there, but is there, like, what's the responsibility? I think that's it's just disrespectful. Disrespectful? If, if, yeah, if they come into your house and then want to practice their religion, uh, it would be like you go into their house and saying you can't practice your religion. That's my take on it. Mm, I can paint a picture. So I went to a potluck with friends uh, last, maybe two years ago because of COVID. There's no way it happened last year, right? Uh, (laughs) But uh, I did not realize that a majority of the people that were there were church friends from one of my friends uh, or church congregation of one of my friends. And so I brought food to this potluck. I am ready to eat some food at this potluck. I am ready to go. I got my fork. I got my napkins. And then all of a sudden, like this really old dude in like, you know, a Larry the Cable Guy cosplay more or less is like, all right, everybody, we're ready to eat. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm getting in line. He's like, all right, everyone bow your heads. And I'm like, no, because I'm ready to eat. I'm cold and I'm ready to eat. I'm in your backyard and I brought food. I brought better food than everybody else here. Mm -hmm. Black people know how to bring good food at potlucks. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, saying. and it's just like, 
oh lord i'm like no and he's a slow prayer too <laughs> let's let me just eat so mm -hmm. in times like that i always like to keep my eyes open and scan the room to see are there anybody else who are here like me or on the same level mm -hmm. why everyone else has their heads down and there's like five other people who are like what's going on and i'm yeah. like i don't know how long is this gonna take he's just like i don't know i want to get some of that mashed potatoes man i was like yeah mm -hmm. so at that point, would it? I, I played the scenario in my head. Would it be rude for me to just, you know, start chucking stuff on my plate while everyone else is like praying to God? And would they look? I'm not interrupting their prayer, right? Like I'm not saying, hey, I'm not saying you can't pray. I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm hungry. I brought my own food here. I'm, I'm, and you know, we're all contributing here. Yeah. You guys can pray if you want to pray. I won't stop you, but I'm here at a potluck, you know, and I'm not religious. Right. Would that be rude or not? I imagine it would not be taken well, <laughs> but still, why is that? Why is that the world that we live in? George, uh, George, have you, uh, Brooklyn, George, have you ever had a situation like that? Well, yes. Um, and it, I mean, it, it, it puzzles me. I, I come from a Jewish background mm. and I'm here. I'm not, I'm not in Knoxville. Matter of fact, <clears throat> for our listening audience, and viewing audience, there's only one person on the screen here who is in Knoxville, and he just waved his hand. That's Larry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm out here in in uh, the country. Let, let me put it that way. And so, for me, uh, it's it's not just that everybody around here is religious; they're all Christian, and they're all a certain kind of Christian, mostly. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go out. I go to the supermarket, I find kosher food oh, for, for sale. Okay. There's a kosher kiosk in my local Ingalls Market. And now there is a food city that opened up downtown and they've got a little kosher food section. So I'm thinking, where are these Jewish people who are eating this stuff? Where are they hiding? I haven't mm -hmm. met any. I've been yeah. here five, five years. I haven't met they any. They just started a meetup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I don't want to. You know, because I'm an atheist, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those Jewish, those Jewish people might also be at the same time too. You never know. Yeah. Well, yeah, but but it's like I, I'm doubly damned in a mm. way, and so um, I haven't outed myself as mm. an atheist because I'm afraid to, to. Frankly, I mean, I've a couple of times I've said to people that I'm Jewish. I've gone that far, and they have reacted in shock and horror. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to that. So. so would you say there's like peer pressure keeping you in these Christian traditions just because you're afraid, not afraid, but you can feel that you want to avoid the drama of outing yourself and having. Yes, I do. I, I want to avoid the drama. And yeah. you know, it's like, I've, I've, I've come across some, some Muslim people here and I think I'd like to get to know them, hmm. you know, because Hell, I've, I've always wanted to know Muslim people, you know, you know to check each other out and say, what, what do you like? You know, what are you into? What kind of food do you like? You know, you know. What sure, I'm sure, sure, sure. You know, I mean, make America great again. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is a greatness to America. What is it? It's the diversity of all of right. us. It's our differences. And, and I think. Yeah, go I could, ahead. I, I feel like I could totally be more copacetic with Christians if there was just more variety of religions in America and they all had more of an equal say rather than just one brand of vanilla. And this is the one that's going to be in Congress and the house of representatives and right, your local laws, government your courtrooms. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh guys, no, no, no. Diversify it. Just be aware that like, there's a lot of different ideas out there. Uh, yeah. Brooklyn, Buffalo. Boy, I, the, the Asians are certainly saying, you know, with the assault on the Asians, Community. You're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up. What's and up? muffled and muffled too. Yeah. So it would be good if both you and Boudreau could get closer to your microphone. Okay. Well, yeah. Go uh, ahead. Check, check. Yep. yep. Here you right go. Going at Buffalo. Yeah. The Thank you. Phillips. Now finally speaking out. We haven't heard for such a long time about their isolation, basically. Um, I find that very interesting. And to listen to their their different comments. Yeah, I also feel like this is something that has been said from their community for quite some time, and it's not so much that they're finally speaking out, but it's that people are listening, and mm -hmm. and I think that's also 
a, a sign of a, an alternative sign of growth because it's not so much just oh you guys are finally talking about the violence that are happening to your community it's like no we're finally paying attention to it which, <laughs> which i think is a really interesting point which I people think. are we talking about I'm, I'm... Uh, asian community asian community. oh yeah, yeah, latest, yeah latest right. attacks. but uh brooklyn i'm sorry uh buffalo did you have a uh ever have an experience where you felt peer pressured from just the christian zeitgeist yeah to... i've got a couple of di two different ones that come to mind one is when we first moved into our new house and so my wife is religious and i'm not uh and she goes to the the uh before covid she went to this methodist church and, and i don't go um i did it first but i don't go anymore but anyway um i one one day there was a knock on the door and it was the pastor of this Methodist church. Uh oh. And he said, I'd like to come in and bless your home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so he came in and he looked around and, and uh, sat down and he and he said a prayer. And I, I I didn't say anything because I wanted to avoid the drama. Right? Sure. And Who's I'm this crazy also, guy in my house? <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also thinking about my wife. Sure. You know, I don't want to, uh, to I want to avoid the drama for her because she's very sensitive to drama. Uh, so that was the first instance. And um, yeah, interestingly enough, later on, I found out that the same pastor was in the house to have a look around because we have a log home and he subsequently built the log home. So I think he was coming and looking for some ideas as well. But anyway, he said the prayers and he blessed our house. And then the other time was when I had my heart surgery, I was in the hospital. I wasn't feeling well. My family was around me. I certainly didn't want to see any strangers. Mm. And uh, the sub-pastor of the same church showed up uh, to, to wish us all well. And he started praying there in the room. And I felt, you know, what are you doing here? I don't want you here. How could you just barge in? And I was offended. Um, I think we lost him. He froze up. <clears throat> okay. He'll come. He'll be back in a second, hopefully. But I remember him telling the story like he's basically in a bed strapped in. He can talk, but the fact is he's surrounded by his family and he doesn't want to have like a whole argument there with yeah. the, the, the pastor in the room. And, you know, that speaks that says a lot about the opportunistic side of when these sort of situations happen, because it's always easy to say, you know, uh, as a pastor is like, well, I'm just trying to help you out in the, in the, in the glory and good gracious of God. Maybe they actually genuinely believe that, but it's also a complete lack of right. Maybe consent. they don't believe it and they're just using it for the power. And I would hope that's not, that's a, that is still mm -hmm. a, that's a dirty, dirty move. But even if yeah. it wasn't, it's no consent. There's no consent there. Right. Mm -hmm. I have there's a cat. Oh, sorry. Go for it. Go for it, George. Uh, there's the <laughs> assumption. <laughs> Excuse me. There's the assumption that everybody is the way that they are. Yes. You see, and and uh, and they they act on that assumption, and they're not bad people. No. You no. Know? Um, so I'm I'm puzzled as to how to deal with that. But it happens when you meet so few people that you must think that everyone's like you. It's like That's when right. you're when you're in a church, you're not in a very diverse group. You're in a in somewhat in a dogmatic, single-minded sort of point of view where there's clear structures of power and everyone's looking in the same direction. And when everyone's doing that, they're not seeing behind them or beside them and stuff like that. So well, the, key, the key part of what you just said that stands out to me hmm. is that the people do not have experience with people who are different than them. Right. If you spend and your so, entire life in that kind of community, you don't get to meet Muslims. or. And anything. I want to say, too, yeah. that it doesn't really matter where a person is. Um, you know, just because I come from New York City mm. doesn't mean that everybody in New York is enlightened. They are not. Um, you know, it's like there are lots of people in New York City whose whole life is revolved around their, their local subway station. Hmm. You see, and, and they've hardly. And you're ever not talking got... about the sandwich shop, right? Um, I don't think so, Larry. Uh, Subway. No, a, the he's Subway making sandwich. a joke. Don't can't take him seriously. <laughs> I'm don't sorry, I get very serious. serious. Never yeah. ever take Larry seriously. <laughs> I'm gonna do this stuff to you every day. No, but really, they, they it's almost like they they've never been outside their own neighborhood, except mm -hmm. when they were in the army and got shipped out somewhere. Yeah, so it's a small city sort of mentality in wrapped around what is genuinely what I like to believe goodwill. 
But the problem yes. is you need to have consent to make these things happen. I have a cat. I, have, I want to get the story out because I don't want to say I have a cat t- twice randomly and people are like, what is okay. he talking about? I have a cat. I can pet a dog whenever I want to pet the dog. The dog is, is bred to love to be petted. Mm-hmm. A cat that only wants to be petted when the cat wants to be petted. So when I pet a dog, I'm like, here's the dog. I'm putting my hand on the dog. Dog's happy. But for a cat, I have to leave my hand out and it's up to the cat to decide yeah, I'll get a pet now or no, nah, I'm not into it and I'll walk away. And it's all about like that consensual petting that makes the whole thing good. Right. With a lot of religion, especially pastors, there's just, no, I'm going to pray for you because it's, I'm obligated to do it for you. It's like, I'm involved as an agent in this as well. I don't want to hear this prayer. It's all about like consent. To, yeah. If you'd like to do it remotely, go for it, but don't come into my home <laughs> <laughs> and say, I'm here to bless your home. It's like, you could have done that from your apartment. You don't have to do that here. It's like, I'm here to bless, uh, bless your log cabin. I'm here to bless this potluck. You could have done that on the drive over here. You don't have to hold everybody up to eat food. Mm-hmm. I, I'm reminded of the inauguration that happened re- uh, recently with the uh, Biden's roll-in. I, I, I won't dismerge the fact that I was not a fan of Trump. So I'm totally happy that we had a, a good rollover into the Biden administration. But there are a lot of things that I was watching during that time where it's like, oh, it's so religious. I hope I, I'm really kind of hung up on this. And, and I, I appreciate the fact that like Biden is, you know, America's president first. And like he's done like good moves and rolling back, you know, block access to abortion and stuff like that. Things that are specifically anti-Catholic. So I'm like, OK, he's looking around. Also, Kamala Harris. You know, she's got that Jewish, married a Jewish guy. She's got a mom that, you know, is, is not Christian. Dad that is like all these different religions mixed into one person. Probably doesn't take any of them absolutely seriously. I'm happy about all that. But the inauguration itself had a lot of moments where it's like, and I'm Reverend blah, blah, blah. And I'm here to bless this inauguration. And we all have to listen to this guy get prayer. In. And I'm like, oh, please move on. And then he sits down and another pastor stands up and he's ble- doing the second blessing. And I'm like, what's going on? We have to get Trump out, and Biden has only so many heartbeats left. <laughs> Let's speed this up. He's not a young spring chicken, guys. Come on. Hey, what's up, uh, uh, Dread Pirate, who just joined in? Buffalo. Hey, hey Dread. Uh, are you back in? Is everything good on your side? Can you hear us? Yes, perfect. Wonderful. We're gonna, Dread- we're, we've got a weak signal here, so we're going to leave the video off. That sounds like a great plan. Okay, sounds okay. good. Dread. <laughs> Hey, just for the sake of goodwill, would you mind doing an invocation for us? Because <laughs> it's kind of we all consent. Or do we all consent to having? We, we uh, consent. Okay, okay, go, go. What? What? Uh, we we've all consented to have a, a invocation for this oh. meeting today. Yes. Okay. Well, just give me half a sec then. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Sure. Our noodly lord, work <laughs> in a colander. Al Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we put up with those who cuss against us and lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs for thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Dread, I want to ask a question. Have you ever prayed for someone who didn't want to be prayed for? Or no. prayed to isn't why is that important? Would you mind explaining that? Um well certainly I don't I've had people say that they would pray for me hmm. and and I've said please don't. Um for for one thing, the it's uh it's hubris to think that um you know, you can do somebody a favor by appealing to what you think is your connection to a superior power. Hmm. Um, and, and so I, I wouldn't do it to somebody who didn't want it done. And uh, I wouldn't want it done to me by somebody who thinks they can. Mm. Okay. You're, it's just a, Hey, it's a, it's a default pro could pro sort of situation. It's like, I'm not going to do it to you. Please don't do it to me. It's all about yeah. consent. If you made well, exactly, I, and and I don't even say uh, I don't say bless you anymore to people who sneeze, hmm. because I think it's uh, it's one of those knee jerk things that people just do without even appreciating why they do it, hmm. and just really how how silly it is. 
I say praise to the seven when sometimes people sneeze, and I'm well, I, I, gonna stop. I go to that. the I go to the Seinfeld <laughs> thing now. You're so, You're so good, looking. good looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're in that age group. Uh, George, we were, we were finishing up the story that you were saying when you were in the hospital and you had the pastor over and uh, basically he's praying and it's like offensive because you, you he's around your family and you don't want to make a scene, but you also are sort of in this awkward position. Um, what was your takeaway from that? Uh, I, I helped to finish the story for you, but I wanted you to get your final thoughts on that. Well, my takeaway was that that minister was very uh, um, insensitive and, mm -hmm. and that I, 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 he will be painted that way in my mind forever. Oh, yeah, he showed no sensitivity to uh, the fact that I might not want that. Just from the point of view of my discomfort at the time, I was physically yeah. not comfortable at all. I didn't want any strangers around, but he just barged in and started praying. But he was making so many good points with his God on, at your expense, isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, think of all the brownie points he was making. He probably got like six, you know, credibility points with everybody for his <laughs> God. Isn't that the better, greater purpose? Well, I guess. <laughs> this, this same guy one time, I, I ran into him in the hardware store. Oh, no. He, he came up to me, and I was looking for some ant killer, the old-fashioned kind that has boat borate in it, and uh, that... You, you can't hardly buy it anymore. Uh, and, and so I was looking for it, and I, he came up to me, and he and started to talk. And um, I think he said, well, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for a borate-based ant killer. Uh, and uh, I said, I don't see that they make it anymore. And he says, uh, I said, maybe I'll go and make my own. I'm, you know, I've got, I've got chemicals. Sure. I know what yeah. these ingredients are. I can look at the internet. And, uh, and he said, ah, he laughed and he says, ah, a mad scientist, you know. Hmm. So he knew I was, uh, you know, in, engaged in science. And to me, my immediate thought was, he's doing the same thing again. He's making these assumptions. Mm. Yeah, it. that's not a casual thing that you say to people. Yeah. And, and uh, so, again, he's painted forever as a very yeah. insensitive person. And I don't want to have much to do with it at all. Matt, plus making borate is not hard. Like if someone was making scrambled eggs, you wouldn't be like, ah, you psychopathic cooker. He's just like, no, uh, like this is, it's a really easy situation. It's just powders you mix together. What's going on? <laughs> George, what's going on? What's up? What's up? Um, you know, this, I'm going to come back to this um, a number of times, I think. Something that's been on my mind for some time now is that we generalize. Hmm. It's human nature to generalize. We have to do it. It's the way we make sense out of the world. We compartmentalize information in our heads and animals do it. And so, uh, George Buffalo, I wanted to ask you, what was the context of this person you're talking about? Where were you, for one thing? What was in your location? At the oh, hospital or the hardware store? A hospital bed, and I could hardly move because I just had 5X bypass surgery. Yes. And, but what city was this in? What oh, town? In Lexington, in, in Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky. See, not Buffalo, New York. Oh, no, no. So Buffalo's got, what, 2 million people, right? And uh -huh. and um, Lexington's got a whole lot less. Yeah. And the... A person's sphere of inter of interaction with other people is much smaller in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm assuming, so so this person's world is smaller. Yeah, the diversity of his experience is smaller, and, and he people. has made an assumption about you which was wrong, but based upon the generalizations that he's made from his his own small contextual universe. Yeah. I, I That's think my point. Piece, but that we're missing. Ty, do you have a minute? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, the other piece I think we're missing here is, is they think that doing these things has no penalty. Like right. it, it can't hurt anyone. They, they're doing these things. And Eric, that's what I want to talk about. Second half of the show. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> that is that is a whole thing I'm setting up for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I will I will say this before we head out to the break, George. Yes, he's a product of his environment, but everyone's a product of their environment. It's not the that's fact right. that it's ubiquitous that it's okay, right? We all do like, it. We, we all have to hold it. ourselves to a higher standard. It's like yes, yeah. it's common, but we also have to treat each other well. Larry, uh, go on ahead and say your points, and then take us out. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say a couple of times that uh, 
uh, religious people have taken advantage of me, uh, just point blank. Um, <clears throat> my second wife and I were both uh, atheists, but her mother wanted us to go to her church. Uh, so we, we conceded and went. The, the preacher met us in the foyer. He met everybody in the foyer. And he would take your hand and he wouldn't let it go until he was ready to let it go. What? No, I'm not kidding. You could try to pull your hand away and he'd just hold it. Well, this was my first uh, <clears throat> introduction to this. And I let him have it for just a few minutes. And then I, I, I stepped back and pulled my hand away. And he held it so hard that he actually dug a channel through my th my my palm. What? I mean, yeah. Um, this was over in Smithwood Baptist in North Knoxville. If anybody is familiar with that, they probably know the pastor. The other time was just when, I mean, we have our atheist meetups. I mean, this is just a, a bunch of atheists getting together on a schedule, having dinner, drinks, conversations. And there was this religious guy felt he had to come down and just preach at us. And he came in and he sat down for about two months every week. He would show up, sit down and try to convert us to Christianity. Wow. Now, they just feel they got to, I guess. And well, at least that particular one did. And uh, it was, you know, everybody after, say, the second or third week just stopped talking to him. I mean, we tried to be polite and tried to ask him not to preach to us. Totally ignored it. And went on for two months before he finally left. So that, that's my two examples. I could give you a lot more. I've been an out atheist for 20 years and a leader in the, in the atheist community. But... Um, We'll just hold it there and go on to break. Nice. <laughs> uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. To the curious, the inquisitive, the seekers of knowledge, to the ones who just want to know about life, about the universe, about yourself. Not cute questions, big questions, ones that matter. To the rebels, the artists, the free thinkers, and the innovators who care less about labels and more about truth, who believe nonconformity is more than a bumper sticker, that knowledge is more than words on a page. You're young, you're old, you're powerful beyond measure, and the fuel of that power is not magic or mysticism, but knowledge. The things you see, the things you feel, the things you know to be true. Sure, some will doubt you. Let them. Dare to think for yourself, to look for yourself, to make up your own mind. Because in the eternal debate for answers, the one thing that's true is the power of logic. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, March 21st, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, and this is the second half of the show. Um, let's talk about the atheists and free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year, and ASK has now over a thousand members. We get together on a weekly Zoom meeting during this COVID outbreak, but hopefully for too long, we'll start meeting back in person again for dinner, drinks, and conversation. You can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just go to Meetup or Google and type in Knoxville Atheist. It could be just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, start one. one. All right. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee, R-E-T. You can find them on Facebook or at rationalist.org. Go there and click up upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about Knoxville's Atheist video show. Well, they do it every week, and their archi archives are on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and do a search for Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville or Free Thought Forum. Knoxville. Free thought Knoxville will get you in either case. With us on the show today, we have Wombat, we have uh, Buffalo and um, Boudreaux, <laughs> and it's hard to, to say who it is um, if they're not on the screen, but uh, with us on the screen, see Brooklyn, there it is. Hey! And there's Dread Pirate. Yay! 
Hey, and what what were we talking about? Where you want to pick up today? Sign language for fan. And it's always hard to describe sign language over the radio, right? But imagine mm-hmm. making a fantastic sign with your hands. You know, that little thing that looks like almost like a like you pinched your thumb and your like pointer finger together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're saying, okay, the fantastic mm-hmm. sign, that's a sign for F. If you make a fist with your thumb on the side of your hand, that's an A. And then if you take your first two fingers, your pointer and your middle finger, and wrap it over your thumb, that's an N. F A N. That's how you spell fan. But I want to go over listener feedback today. But before we do that, what a fan, what a fan, what a fan, fan, what a mighty good fan. What a mighty, mighty mighty good good fan. Cool, cool, (laughs) cool, cool, cool. All right. So we are going to go over a really great question that we got uh, in the messenger group that we have. Uh, This was from our own Boudreaux. And he asked, can religious guests always make the argument that grace doesn't hurt atheists? Just just so just the uh so just let us say it basically hey it doesn't hurt you to for me to pray so just let me pray like what's the what's the real offense here and actually abujo you were alluding to that as like an excuse that you had been given earlier in the show would you mind elaborating on that and maybe giving your thoughts on what you think is the best course for that yeah no i'm I'm, i think really uh i'm kind of uh, of, of an open mind here. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering this because I've done the same thing. Uh, let's see. No, it was uh, Dread Park. I've kind of considered stop saying bless you because it seems seems silly and also seems admitting you believe in it a bit, but it seems rude. So I'm, I'm, so I'm torn. Um, I, I know uh, I, I've done a lot of conferences in the South, particularly where right before the big banquet, before the meal, Everyone bows their heads, and I do the same thing. I look around to see how many cool people are in the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I do that at work. I've, I've, I've done that a lot. And uh, I've gotten nods. I've gotten, you know, mm-hmm. uh, looks. You know, of course, occasionally you catch someone that just opened their eyes by mistake or whatever. Or what You know, whatever. They probably, like, oh, you know. But <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I struggle with it because I don't know. Because one is is a an, you're doing something saying grace and the other is you're not doing it it's really hard for me to say you can't say grace or you know do it do it in you know uh in your own mind don't say it out loud it just it's hard for me to say that because that seems that doesn't seem to be the right tactic Mm. um i i think you need there needs to be a middle ground maybe i i don't know that's why i'm i'm asking you guys i'm curious what you guys dread pirate we'll go with you first what's your thoughts and I'll, I'll try to speak more quietly because I am inside a car here. So that's why the gain's so high. He always starts with an apology. Isn't that great? It wouldn't be Canadian. <laughs> um, but in, in British Columbia, um, there's a lot of treaty uh, nation. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone tends to start these meetings with uh, an acknowledgement of the, the unceded grounds of uh, one tribe or, <clears throat> or another. Mm-hmm. And you, and some of these bigger conferences, of course, they'll have a, an elder come in to do a blessing, and I I find that offensive myself because it's just you know it's just trading Christianity for another form of uh, spiritualism, which I do not agree with. And so you know when you know when the elder says you know everyone stand up and we'll do the invocation all that kind of stuff, I don't. And I do that at the expense of um, looking really, really out of place. But I sense, of course, that there are others that feel the same way, but go with the crowd and stand up in spite of themselves, um, not wanting to look uh, out of place. Um, But I I just won't have it myself. Mm. Good for you. Great points. Uh, uh, Brooklyn. George, you want to win? Yes, um, got a, a short one and a long one. The, short, the short one is that um, I just keep quiet. I just don't say anything. You know, let them... That's a short one? Yeah, that's a short one. The long one's a funny one. <laughs> this is a Go funny one. Um, I had shoulder surgery last uh, July, and the woman who drove me over to the hospital is an atheist also. 
And so uh, I was waiting, uh, you know, to go into the operation. And my atheist friend said, I'll pray for you. Mm. And we both burst out laughing. Right. And, um, and then um, after it was all over, I was still partially under the anesthetic. A nurse um, rolled me out in a wheelchair to her car and helped me get into the car. And then I'm told, this is what I did. Um, the nurse said to me, have a blessed day. And I replied, F you. Classic story. That's my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my long one. <laughs> Larry, I'd like to see what your opinion is on this. Um, the harm in, what do you, is there, if someone said, hey, what's the harm in just asking you to pray with me? over the food that you cooked, Larry? Like what's- Oh, that would be the equivalent to me saying, uh, don't be, don't pray and stay silent with me. I mm -hmm. mean, he's got a right to practice his own religion, but he doesn't have to force it on me. Right. And, and if he wants to like pray in my presence, uh, he can do it in his head. Uh, yeah. If he wants to do it out loud, then he shouldn't mind if I walk away or, or do something else while he's doing it. Right. Um, you know, it's just, uh, just another means for them to force the religion on you. I think back to that potluck and, you know, I was happy to not make a scene, you know, I, uh, it, it sucks. It sucks when you're put in that kind of situation, but yeah. it's also like such a, uh, a position of such an easy privilege. It's such mm -hmm. an easily privilege. It's just like, of course you would want to pray with me. Of course, everyone here is a, a, a Christian. And if they're not, well, they're going to do it anyway, because this is my home and you brought food to my home to eat at my place. So <laughs> I have the advantage here. But it's like, if I knew that, I wouldn't have probably come. <laughs> and if you and if I ever cook food and I'm inviting other people to come to eat at my place and someone says, hey, I would like for everyone to bow their heads in prayer. It's like, no, you're in my place. Don't do that. I <laughs> would speak up in that point. But I here here's where I eerily draw the line because I have gone, for example, to... Uh, home with a bunch of Chukta, uh Native Americans, and they said, hey, we have a thing that we do before we eat. And I'm like, I am fascinated by this. I absolutely want to be a part of this. I want to hear it. They asked me though, so I did say yes. Yeah. But it was like this, it was like a prayer, but it was more of like, hey, for the food that we have, for the friends that we have, for the family that we have, we're thankful. And then they just ate. And I'm like, that is a great thing to say. In Japan, they also have a, 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 a phrase that they, they offer before they eat food, which is more, which is akin to, I humbly accept this food. And it's commonly understood that everybody says that before they eat, even if it's just a quick little thing. And I'm like, that's fine too. Like, if it's a cultural thing, I'm good with it. If it's a, if it's a novel experiment experience, I'm fine with it. But if it's a thing that is so clearly dogmatic and, and tied to like a, a, a specific God, and it's assumed that you believe in that God too, and that you have to do it because I'm not asking you. I feel like that's a draw line. It's, it's a lot of nuance mm -hmm. there. But basically, don't force word, me to do it. Another another word is unsophisticated. Unsophisticated. You know? Yeah, they're, they're they're giving no thought to what they're doing. The, the you know the the Indians thank the uh, the animals that they've killed before giving them something to eat, and uh, you know that that is in contrast to I think just forcing their religion upon you. And yeah. on the on the bless you thing, the way I look at it is, if I say anything, I, I like like George, I remain quiet. Um, when somebody says bless you when I sneeze, if I say anything, I, I'm just becoming a purveyor of their religion. Mm. Um, I would like I'd like to add something to that because uh, I, I, one thing I like about this discussion is that each of us is coming at this from a personal standpoint. E each one of us has, has offered a unique uh, perspective and, and I have to respect that. I have a, a woman who's been helping me and she is a case manager for my insurance company. If I call her voicemail, I get an announcement and the end of the announcement is have a blessed day. Now, if a person says that to me, sometimes I feel I will give this person no quarter. <laughs> mm, can I can I throw something out just as a yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, there is a a perceived monopoly on words that I don't think is justified. 
And I would say like Christians don't own the word chariot. They don't own the word congregation. They don't even own the word Lord. They borrowed that from like medieval times when there was like a Lord of properties and they just applied that to a God because they needed a word for that. But like Lord chariot, uh, bless. I don't think they own that word either. And I feel like our, our, our increasing obstinance to use that word only gives them more ammunition without a reasonable fight. And I feel like why give them that? Well, let me continue. Um, I have grown to know this person. And I mean, a little bit. We've had a number of conversations on the phone. And I've grown to like her. And that changes the whole ball game, mm. Because I will cut her some slack. If she says, have a blessed day in her voicemail, that's sure. okay. That's okay. You know, she's yeah. just, she's just doing it from her, whatever background she's got. Um, she's a genuinely nice person. Sure. And help, helpful. And that's I also I feel like saying. he gave me, so like you could know. Situation the person, like that, but, a situation like that, I have, a friend of mine just responds, that's sweet. Yeah. You know. Like, thank you for saying that, but without without agreeing that it's a religious, as a religious context. Yeah, yeah, right. yes, that's yes. that's the midpoint. I would say like <laughs> there would be way less stress if I just did not connotize that with a religion thing. And if yeah. someone says "bless me," it's like yeah, because I I don't want to get sick, or like maybe <laughs> it's a nice thing to sneeze. I'm fine with it. I'm not. It's not like they pull out a Bible. And if I know I know other atheists who say "bless." you when you sneeze and it's like not a big deal and if people are like having a conversation where it's like bless you and then the one atheist in the room is like f you for saying that and i'm like <laughs> oh no you're making us all look bad let yeah. me go out of my way to say hey i'm an atheist and i also say bless you and that guy's crazy <laughs> with this guy so, but yeah 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 i hope you get better too but uh, but uh yeah i think we we got to watch our reputation. Uh, that's all. Yes. Perceived, there's a perceived perception issue here. Uh, well, one of the original atheists uh, who got a reputation was mm. a woman named Madeline Murray O'Hare. Mm. And um, she, <clears throat> fa she founded an organization which is still very big in this, in the atheist business, let me say. And um, uh, she was a very obnoxious woman, you know, and, and it's like what you're saying, Tyrone, um, what kind of a reputation has she laid on all, all the rest of us? You know, she was killed, yeah. right? Yeah, I believe so. And, and probably the person who did it did us all a favor, you know. <laughs> Larry, you happen to know some things about this lady as well. Did you want to weigh in? Which lady is that? Madeline, Madeline Murray. Oh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. We have her to thank for the fact that she... Uh, she pretty much got prayer taken out of the school. And, of course, they, the religious challenged that all the way up to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court upheld it. Mm. So no more praying in school from the authorized or the authority figure, the teacher, uh, the administration. You can't do that anymore. However, whenever somebody says there is no prayer in school, that's just silly. Uh, there will be prayer in school as long as there are tests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh there's she she's responsible for an awful lot <laughs> of the good, the good uh, i mean the advancement that atheists have made in america and if if you're not familiar with madeline murray o'hare uh i would look her up and see all of the action that she did she yeah. also created the american atheist organization that's what i was talking about yeah, yeah. I think it's also important to highlight this goes back straight into boudreaux's question like what harm does it cause why don't you just let us say it it's because there's so many unilateral protections put onto very specific religious groups mm -hmm. that aren't evenly distributed to anybody else such that when someone says what's the harm of me saying it? it's like well you, these these rights or the privileges that you're using aren't being given to anybody else right. so for me to kowtow to to just allow you to do what you want because there's no perceived harm mm -hmm isn't the same measure of protections that we're giving to anybody else yeah. and just only serves to benefit you. You and don't have to look any farther than like the, the county seats, uh, their invocations. They're mm -hmm. like 100% Christian and usually right. Protestant Christian, uh, particularly in the South. Uh, and 
I'm sure Dread Pirate can can chime in here to try to be able to get a different sect of any kind of religion right. to give the invocation is just heresy to them. They they won't allow it generally. We've and had Dredd to go to uh, public opinion here in Knoxville and surrounding counties to get our invocation done. And Dredd, we'll throw this to you because I think it's really important because when you start giving so many privileges to one religion, that one religion becomes the de facto judge on who also gets to have religious privileges. And that's a really, really bad, you know, loop. You don't want to have that. Do no. you want to speak on that, Dredd? Well, one thing I, I would certainly like to point out is that, um, as I mentioned about the uh, Native Americans or Indigenous peoples, um, this uh, this move towards uh, sort of um, invo invocating or making invocations at the beginning of meetings, if you don't participate or if you don't agree with it, you're seen as a colonialist. And that a colonialist or oh. a, yeah, so you're you're painted as um, you know a, an Indian hater essentially, oh. um, or, or a racist um, because if because they just they don't separate these things uh, you know the the separation of their spiritual beliefs you know by all means have them but don't you know don't impugn me. Um, because I don't participate on on the grounds that I don't believe in spiritualism, right? Or I don't believe in you know the great spirit or the ancestors or all that crazy stuff, blood and soil. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that stuff. Um, and I've just found that uh, I've run up you know some instances where you know people have said, "Well, you're a colonialist," or a colonialist, and I get very offended. Uh, by that label. Is that a Canadian thing? Because I've never heard of that word until today. I, well, like it's, I it's, know what a colonial is, but I didn't know it was a derogatory term until today. It is, absolutely. And certainly in, in like, I work with community foundations, so I had a, a pretty strong, um, in, in, uh, you know, occasion to, to sense that uh, when I was at a conference in Ottawa. Um, where it was really around uh, the reconciliation mm. and that if you aren't full on board with reconciliation and, and making the clear distinction that there is indigenous and non-indigenous people. And mm. if you're non-indigenous, you owe every indigenous person a, an apology and um, a, a duty to participate in their spiritualism. And uh, no, I'm just not buying it. So, yes, in Canada, it seems to me that it's pretty strong, especially in British Columbia, because um, there's uh, so many small uh, nations and tribes um, that uh, are, you know, unresolved treaty nations. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's pretty big in BC. Jeez. Um, I do want to flip this on its head real quick because we're getting towards the end of the show. I don't want to just continue to bash on religion. I know atheists or non-religious topics have a tendency to uh, uh, pick topics of conversation or derail conversations in ways that the people at the table did not consent to either. There have been, for example, you know, the guys who are like, hey, I want to talk about politics. Can you believe what's going on with X, Y, Z? And you're like, oh, it's the politics guy. We're playing, we're bowling or like we're doing work. We don't want to talk about uh, politics or people who'd like to do Hey, let me tell you about my stocks and how they're doing. It's like, I don't want to talk about your money. <laughs> Last thing I do is think about money, uh, your relationships or whatever issues you're having with them or politics. Aren't those the, and then religion. Those are like the four taboos of social com uh, conversation. But have you had experience, just so we can contextualize this for religious people who might be watching the show. Have you had experience, we'll go with Larry first, with topics that are not religiously based but are being pushed on you on a non-consensual basis. Have you ever had a conversation where you're like, man, I wish there was an exit plan here because I don't want to have this conversation with you. But the other guy totally wants to have that conversation mm. with you. Well, sure. Um, I can't really come up with any right off the top of my head. But uh, the ones that you mentioned come to mind, uh, mm. talking about people talking about insurance, mm. talking about uh, their work. Specific specifically, my brother was really bad about talking about his work. Uh, and I mean, he held me on a phone conversation one time for two hours talking about Ooh. his work. 
You can't have but... Larry on the phone for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking about video games at that point. That's He's right, just like, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You might hear a toilet flush yeah, in the background. But, like, sure, it happens. <laughs> Dread, you raised your hand. Did you want to talk about a conversation you've been forced into? Just to get well, yeah. of course, over the last year, it's really uh, COVID conspiracies. Mm. Oh, and, um, yeah. And yeah. I am so yeah. done and tired of hearing, you know, people, I don't know anyone that died from it. And yeah, stop already. Yeah. I mean, it's, I would, you know, in, in certain situations, it would be a great opportunity to do an SE. But in a lot of occasions, it's not. You know what I mean? I'm I'm a busy guy, and you know I don't have always 20 minutes to, you know, sit down with you and and you know have a, a reasoned and intelligent discussion. Hmm. But just to lay it on me, oh, this COVID, you know, blah blah blah. It's like stop already. I just turn around, and I walk away. Good for you. Good for you. George and uh, B- uh, Buffalo and Boudreaux, did you guys have uh, a topic that you were ever forced into and did not want to have that conversation, but it was it was almost unconsensually pushed on you? Uh, I got one kind of ties a little bit to Dread Pirate, but specifically um, uh, against the vaccine. Like the, yeah. the people that are like, no, nah, I'm going to wait until it's safe or, or uh, you know, I don't know if I really need it. It's just like you are just not helping one bit. You're, you're right. just, you know, if, if you don't want the vaccine, just don't talk about it. You got to stop spreading <laughs> bad information. <laughs> or, uh, and and then on the flip side, I there. So we have been lucky in our job where a lot of people are getting vaccinated just due to the nature of our work. But uh, there are people who clearly don't want to be vaccinated, and I've had one-on-one conversations with them. And it's always a different excuse each time. Typically, it's like, well, I just don't want to get sick. It's like, oh, uh, I, I, I'm too busy at my work. I can't really walk away from, you know, pushing this button and having it do a, a three-hour test for me with no interaction for me whatsoever. Or just like, yeah, I, allergies are coming up and I don't want a complex, you know, a headache or anything like that. Bad time of the month, whatever. Uh, makes me upset. But yeah, <laughs> I get that. Brooke, uh, Buffalo, did you want to weigh in? I just wanted to say I heard I heard a good comment. Uh, the best comment I've heard on this uh, from a, a actually uh, uh, a uh, African American minister was oh. asked, "Well, what do, what do you do uh, to get past the resistance of your your congregation? You know, with things in mind like the Tuskegee experiment and all mm-hmm. that stuff." Yeah. But uh, he says he he says, "Well, he says I just tell him, do you want to cough or do you want a coffin?" <laughs> oh, oh, I, I like, like that. that. <laughs> cool, George Buffalo. Uh, it's get Brooklyn George. You guys got to get different names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm George Brown, the two and a half. I know you have a neighbor across the street who's probably you know put up propaganda signs and probably roped into conversations. You no, he stopped. He stopped doing it. He stopped. Did he really? Did oh, listen okay. to your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was when the it was when the Baptist Church said that um, uh, flying a, a Confederate battle flag was racist and you shouldn't do it. They oh, he, and he, he changed took, his mind. He took down his Confederate battle flag. This was about um, four years ago, I think. This happened. Wow. Okay. He's he has never said anything about. Um, believing in that particular branch of baptism i but he just the fa- the flag vanished nice and, and it has not been it has not been seen since george i want you to think about something that you can plug before we close the show today dread pirate is there what's going on with you and what would you like to plug also where can we get access to that pdf uh disclosure that the judge gave you from uh, a couple of weeks back don't forget to put yourself off mute my friend Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Yes, so, what always starts with an apology. Yeah, that's how you know he's Canadian. <laughs> uh, it's almost religious. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I can be found on Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E, yeah. on YouTube. Um, and what I'll do is I'll post it as a, I think I can put it up as a file there. Right on YouTube. In the comment sections, yeah, you can in say the like, comment hey, section. So that's, here I that's am, what I'll do. Story went through. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a short video uh, as an introduction to the whole thing, 
uh, nice. so people can find me on there. So, and please subscribe if and when you do go. Nice. So thank nice, you. Nice, nice. Cool. Hey, uh, Boudreaux, tell me something cool that we should check out before next week. What do you think? Oh, I got a good one. And oh. I, I'm going to need you to promise me that you won't listen to this when you're tired. Okay. I don't want you to fall asleep. All right. Oh, no. Because it's our boy, oh, Sam Harris. No. Sam Harris? <laughs> Listen, and taken, Bingo was his name. He's taken all of his thoughts on free will and put them into one podcast. And he, I'm telling you guys, if you're for it or against it or believe in it or not, listen to the podcast. It is fabulous. And it gets into morality. It gets into why uh, it's important for us to admit there's no free will. Please listen to it. And Are you asking us? You're asking us to choose to listen to this podcast, how there is no free will. Is that and what you're actually, asking? Actually, that, that is <laughs> on the show. Well, some of us will and some of us won't. And it's already predetermined. <laughs> Why are you asking us to do it if it's already Is, it, is that on the, what? is that the Sam Harris site then? Is, I'll put the link in. Actually, Ty, he, he yeah. addresses that exact issue on the podcast. Put, about why that well, is not a, a paradox put your put the put the link in the messenger I'll, group and I'll we'll uh, post it with the show yeah <laughs> okay great buffalo george anything that you'd recommend we check out before next week uh not particularly cool it's been a very interesting year. george buffalo uh yeah. from brooklyn what what's your uh thing that you would recommend you yeah, i had something on my mind and i can't remember it now i'm Fair sorry so i'll good. remember it next week mm -hmm. uh I picked up a really great book over the last month called You Won't Believe What Happened to Lacey. It's a book by a comedian named Amber Ruffin. She's the only black and only female late night show host on NBC. Uh, she's got a show called The Amber Ruffin Show. And she wrote a book with her sister who they were both raised in Omaha, Nebraska. And they were chronicling all the random funny stories that happened to them that involve racism. And you might think, oh, no, that's sad. It's like, they have a, she's a really great comedian. She, she frames everything in a hilarious point of view. And two, it's good to be uncomfortable about stuff like this. And so the book is called, you, you Can't Believe What Happened to Lacey. She's promoting it on her show. But what I'd really recommend is that you check out Amber Ruffin's YouTube channel. Uh, it's on Peacock NBC. But Amber Ruffin's show is really great. If you see the Seth Meyers show and you like Seth Meyers, she's the lead writer on that show. And a lot of the How do you spell it? How do you spell it? R-U-F-F-I-N. She's the she's Amber Ruffin. R-U-F-F-I-N. She's the lead writer on that. And a lot of the funny stuff happens when she comes on the show and plays as a character, and Seth are, and her are both playing back off each other. It's really great. Uh Larry, you know, I keep having this problem. Uh, you say I should check out this thing called atheism, and I'm like, you know, I have a car already. And it's a really nice car. I don't know what you mean by atheism. Is that a new model car? Maybe I just don't know what it's all well, about. Talk to me. Perhaps you could uh, find a book that says uh, what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> my, my book oh, is, hey, is hey, called okay. Atheism, What's It All About? And it's available nice. on Amazon. Uh, my own content, generally for the book and otherwise, is on uh, digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button if you go there. Uh, we also have our show archive, uh, Atheist Songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, my YouTube channel is under Larry S. Rhodes. If you have any questions for the show, this radio show, you can or this podcast, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religions behind, uh, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Nice. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy <laughs> your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye-bye. Hey,